All right. <clears throat> well, how you guys doing today? All right. Amen. All right. I know you guys have, uh, most of you guys look pretty wore out tonight at uh, Circle Up. You know, it's pretty hot out there. We realize it's hot. Um, you know, so we're, we're, uh, we're not uh, insensitive to that. But you know what? It gets exciting when you learn something new. And um, so as tired as we are, and guess what? I could put my, myself in that category. I didn't work out in the hot sun today, but I, um, I did more stuff today than I normally do. So, you know, I can, I'm right there with you. Tired is tired, right? But you know what? <clears throat> as soon as I stepped behind this podium, that tired went away. All right. Because the good Lord's here with us and he's going to help you get through this. And, and I think we have some stuff for you to, 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 hear, to hear tonight. As far as uh, the series that Pastor Joe started a while back, we're going to continue with that series tonight, uh, Long-Term Recovery, Inner Healing. Uh, this is part eight, and the subject tonight is judgments. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that and, and show you some how some of the judgments that we have made in the past have uh, are, is currently dictating <clears throat> how we think, how we, what we believe, and how we interact um, in the present. So before we go any further, I want to go ahead and open up with a word of prayer, okay? Praise you, Lord Jesus. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you and we praise you for this time that you have brought and prepared and, and, and allowed us to come together as a family, Lord God, and just discuss the issues that, that we need to discuss. And, and tonight we're talking about judgments. And, and Lord, we just ask you to meet us right where we're at. These men have been outside working. Most of them have been outside working in the hot sun today. They're tired, Lord God, and I pray that you would supernaturally just touch them, Lord God, and energize them, Lord, and give them a, a heart to hear and, and an ear to hear, Lord God, what you want them to learn tonight. Help me to learn what you want me to learn tonight, Lord God, as well. And Father, we'll just be sure to give you all the glory and the praise and the honor in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And everybody said, <clears throat> amen. All right, so as always, we would like to welcome our uh, family and, and friends on Zoom and Facebook. Uh, we appreciate you guys being here. What we're doing here tonight is we have invited you into a classroom here at Fresh Start Ministries of Central Florida in Orlando. And uh, this is a, um, one of our recovery classes that we hold um, here that the men behind the cameras, there's about um, 60 men plus or minus that are here uh, learning in our program and have committed themselves to a year-long program to help deal with any life-controlling problems that they may have, the majority of which here in this house is alcohol and drugs. Amen? Uh, okay, I got the right crowd. All right, just checking. And um, <clears throat> so tonight, uh, well, actually, before I get, go any further, I just want to kind of mention Pastor Joe is normally here. This is Pastor Joe's class, and he is on a, uh, him and his wife, Kelly, are on a well-deserved vacation. And um, so we'll need to uh, keep them lifted up in our prayers as well as they're uh, on vacation, that they would get a, a good rest and, and uh, have a good time and, and return safe and sound uh, to us next week. Amen. And um, so Pastor Joe started this series, uh, Long-Term Recovery uh, Through Inner Healing, uh, several weeks ago. And um, um, this... Uh, lesson tonight is really uh, judgments and soul ties. He's going to do soul ties next week. I'm doing judgments this week. And um, you guys know what judgment is? Huh? When you guys came in here on the first day of your program, you made judgments on, on me. You made judgments on Pastor Joe. Uh, you made judgments on the staff. You made judgments on everybody around you. Um, because that's just what we, we have been taught to do in our lives. And sizing, maybe a better word is sizing us up, you know. Are we really for real? We were sizing you up, to be honest with you, whether you were real or not. Amen. And um, so, <clears throat> but what we're going to talk about tonight is not the, the judgments that we may judge somebody currently. Uh, I really want to focus mainly on the judgments that maybe have been in your life ever since uh, during your developmental years, as far back as you can remember, that you may not even know that are there, that are affecting you in the in the in the present. 
that is affecting your life, how you make decisions, what you think, what you believe, how you interact with others, how you interact with God, how you uh, behave uh, in, in all as aspects of life, whether it's here at the ministry or whether it is um, somewhere else, you know. But uh, that's what we're doing here tonight. And we just, uh, uh, like, I, like I said, um, <clears throat> Pastor Joe has, has uh, started to invite the, the families in uh, to this. And this is open to the public. So if you know anybody that is suffering from addictions and or know somebody that has a loved one that is suffering from addictions, uh, please invite them to this group. It would be well worth their time and energy and effort to be here because they will definitely learn something. You can't sit in one of these classes and not take something back that you can apply in your life. So I'm going to read a couple of scriptures to start out. So I want you to, um, to open your Bibles up, guys. And now you guys know my rule, right? I don't have any problems with the drinks. I don't have any problems with the rappers as long as they don't interrupt the class. Amen? All right. Thank you very much for that. So the first scripture we're going to uh, discuss is Deuteronomy uh, chapter 5, verse 16. And this is out of the NIV Bible. Uh, Honor your father and your mother as the Lord has commanded you. Okay. Did you hear that? Honor your father and your mother as long as they have done you right in your life. Oh, it doesn't say that. It says, honor your father and your mother as the Lord has commanded you. Doesn't matter what kind of, you know, how they were able to, to raise you. It doesn't matter if there was any abuse or anything of that nature. The Bible is clear. Honor your father and your mother as the Lord has commanded. And we'll get into that a little bit a little bit further as, as I go on for what I just said. Moving forward, that your days may be, be prolonged and that you may uh, that it may go well with you in this land which the Lord your God gives you. Hmm. All right. <clears throat> and then in uh, Matthew chapter seven, that's going to be our second scripture, uh, verses one to two. The Bible says, and this is this is actually Jesus speaking. Do not judge, lest you be judged. For in the way you judged, you will be judged. And in your and the and by the standard of measure that you use, it will be measured to you. That's a that's pretty that's a lot right there, is it not? If you think about that, if you think take these scriptures, these two scriptures, the first one, honor your father and your mother as the Lord has commanded you, that your days may be prolonged. In other words, if we obey the word of God and honor our father and our mother, we will live a longer life on this earth. And so, but you may say, well, that's kind of challenging because sometimes, you know, um, maybe we were raised by parents that didn't have a, a good upbringing themselves. And they did the best they knew how, like, for instance, you know, I always use my father as an example. He was a, he was a great guy. He was, he was uh, my baseball coach for pretty much my entire life up until I quit baseball. And, you know, I, my brothers played baseball and he coached them and, and we were connected at the hip. In other words, when he went out to the little league field and, and the baseball field to get them ready and prep for the games that night, I got to go with him. And I love that, you know, uh, getting out there and raking the clay and mowing the yard and, and uh, just being with him and so forth like that. But him and I had a different relationship than maybe, let's say, him and my older brother. They had a closer relationship. And I really never understood why, you know. Um, and I didn't really even understand that or saw that it affected me. But it did. And I didn't realize that until years later. In my adult years, that was actually 30-some years ago when I came to Fresh Start Ministries, 33 years ago. I didn't really understand the level that that disconnect between me and my father had affected me throughout my teenage years, throughout my 
young adult years, throughout my adult years, and even in the present. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. It wasn't until about 10 years ago that God really walked me through a healing between me and my father that, and he had been deceased since 1985. But there was, there was a, a moment that God took me through a process of healing one day. And I'll, one day I, I may share it tonight. I may not. I don't know if we have time. But it, was, it wasn't planned. I didn't, I didn't look to do that. I wasn't trying to, to attain that. It happened. God opened the door for it. We walked through it. And now as a result of that healing, it's now helped me in my adult years to be a, a better person, a better husband, a better father, a better minister, better counselor, just a better person all the way around. And um, so I'll get into that a little bit later. But, but uh, you know, this um, the principle that we were talking about earlier, especially the one about, uh, you know, in Matthew 7, do not judge, lest you be judged. Okay? For in the same way, for in the way you judge, you will be judged. And by the, your measure, by your standard of measure. In other words, the same way you judge somebody else, you're going to be judged the same way by others, okay? It's a principle of God that in every action, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. It's my hope tonight that the two scriptures that we just started out with, you're going to be able to uh, arrive and, and derive some healing and maybe, maybe get you just to think about what we've talked about and what I've shared with you tonight, okay? Okay? There's a lot of things that goes on in our lives, guys, uh, in the present. And, and those that are on Zoom and Facebook, um, you know, this is something that maybe you weren't involved with drugs and alcohol. But really, actually, every person that's in, in this room, including myself, after a 16-year drug addiction, drugs was not our, is not our problem. Drugs and alcohol is just the residual effect of our root problems. And so what this program is all about is helping every person that comes through those front doors to deal with the root issues that they look to solve the problem through drugs and alcohol. Drugs and alcohol do work. You've heard Pastor Joe even say that. It does work. If you want to just get obliviated and, and, and hide the pain, drugs and alcohol will do that for you. But what kind of quality of life is that? What kind of consequences does that generally bring us? Okay. It brings a lot of times, it brings uh, uh, destruction in our relationships with our family. It, it definitely brings us consequences with the man with the star and the badge on the badge and the gun on the, on the side, especially if we're driving drunk and we get pulled over. And then they have to take us to the county, uh, county jail. And then we have to stay there for a little bit. I don't know about you guys, but I just, I just don't like looking through life through the bars. Do you? Anybody here like jail or prison? Nobody raised their hand. Surprising. Okay. So if we can do something, here, here's, here's, my, here's my heart, okay? If we can have the capability, and everybody here in this room has the capability of doing this. I don't care if you're the guy that just came in or the guy that's fixing to graduate. Everybody here has the capability of receiving something and learning something that can help you never go back to that lifestyle, ever. And, and even if you're not, like I said, I'm talking to the family as well. Even if you're not involved with drugs or alcohol, your quality of life can improve greatly if you take time to analyze and evaluate your life, where you come from, and what, how you were raised. Not to blame anybody. This is, we never look at our past to blame anybody for any decisions that we made. Because every one of us in this room, including the staff, because all of our staff were at one point addicted and they decided to get some help and walk through a program. And that's why they're here. And that's why we do, you know, what we do here. Cognitive behavioral therapy through peer counseling. Okay. And, and so we've been there. We can, we can 
we we know exactly what you're going through. We know exactly what you're feeling when you came home tonight and you sat at Circle Up going through roll call and, and turning in your phones and so forth, looking at you and seeing how tired you guys were because you were out in that hot sun working so hard today. We realize that because we used to be in those same chairs. Not these same chairs, but, you know, um, 30 years ago, they were a different set of chairs for me. That's a that's a joke. You can laugh at my jokes. Okay. All right. But if we can learn something that will help us to live a more quality life, isn't that something that we want to do? Isn't that something that we just want to get excited about? Isn't that something that we just want to really, and, and I'm not trying to get you emotionally pumped up right now. That's not what I want to do. What I want to do is to get you uh, attentive so you can learn something to help you change the way you think or to change the way you see something, okay? Because if you change the way you think and you change the way you see something that has been pulling you down over the years, that will revolutionize your life. That will change your life drastically. Not just keep you clean and sober, but will change you drastically in how you handle yourself, how you interact with others, how you... How you Become a, a husband, a father, a grandfather, and on and on and on. It just improves our quality of life. So what I'm trying to do here, I am trying to get you pumped up to the point that you're going to be paying attention and listening and learning, writing notes and, and, and taking down scriptures so you can take those notes and those scriptures at a later time and, and maybe even dive into it a little bit deeper yourself. Or do what, you know, we've mentioned here before. Uh, forget the name of it. SWAT. Um, what did we what did they call the guys? SWAT. What was it? Spiritual warriors at, at twilight? Yeah, spiritual war, warriors at spy, twilight. They would go out here on the dock at night. About Oh, there was about five, six, seven, eight, ten of them, you know. And there was a group that sometimes, you know, because we get, you guys graduate, guys move on and so forth like that. So it fluctuated. But they kept that group going for quite some time. And they'd get out there on that dock and they would talk about, you know, different things that they needed to talk about. And they would pray with each other and pray for each other. And see, that's what we're talking about. That, that right there changes your life in and of itself. It's just prayer time because that's time you're spending in the presence of God. And the time that you spend with the presence of God, man, I'm telling you what, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. And, and when you go to church and, and when you, uh, during the praise and the worship, and, and that's when we typically will recognize the most of the presence of God because we get involved. The Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. So if you get out of that four by four worship, you know what four by four worship is? You just stand up there straight as a board. Should I raise my hand? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. No, but if you get up there and you just surrender, you just throw your hands up in a sign of surrender to, to him and just forget about what everybody else is thinking. Forget about what else, but because nobody's really watching you anyway. In your mind, you think they are, but they're really not. Trust me, I went through that too. And you just get involved in the presence of God. That's when things happen. That's when change happens. That's when not just temporary change. That's when transformation happens. And that's the difference. Transformation versus you wanting to, to force yourself to change and, and do something on your with your own strength and so forth like that. And that's what we're talking about here tonight. We're talking about the transforming of our mind. Paul says in Romans, do not be do not, um, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I had a little brain twist there, okay? But uh, do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, the renewing, that's I-N-G, that's an ongoing process. It's always going to take place. I'm always, we're, we always have to be looking at something that we can grow in. That's why I got, I just, that's what I've been doing all day is packing up books. I got books, so many books 
If you guys want some books, if you're a reader and you'll use them, I'll give you some books. I got so many books back there that Carter's got more than Carter's got liver pills. All right. Trust me on that. All right. And um, but, uh, you know, so here's the thing. We can get excited about what God wants to do in our lives, but it's up to us whether we're going to allow him to work in our life or not. Like here recently, we had a couple guys that made some bad decisions and bad choices. And, and you know, and they've been here a hot two minutes and, and think they got it licked and know what they need to do and how they need to do it, when they need to do it, where they need to do it. And, you know, thank you, but uh, appreciate the 24-hour uh, assistance with, your, with the program. But I got it. Thank you. You know? And those are the guys that will have to leave the light on because, you know, sooner or later, they're, 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 they're going to hit some very difficult times because nothing's changed. And if nothing changes in our lives, guys, nothing changes. So in talking about judgments and, and where I want to go with this, and it's real simple. We're looking at judgments that we have judged maybe our parents. Maybe we have judged our parents in a way that, you know, um, we've looked at them and we've analyzed them and, and we feel like that they've screwed up our lives and so forth like that. But have we ever thought about what they have done? Where they, there's not a book that you get that tells you how to raise children. Now there's experienced, you know, grandmas and grandpas and, and aunts and uncles and so forth like that, that we can get advice from. But you know what? There's nothing that I can remember when my son, when we brought my, my youngest son home from the hospital. Three days old. And, I, and the realization hit me. Oh, my gosh. I'm responsible for this youngin. What I was, what my mama, what my mom always provided, my dad provided for me. Now I've got to be the, the one that provide for him and, and his brother and sister. Because I had two older children as well. So I have three children. And I'm going, oh my goodness. You know, Lord help me. You know, that's why I need to be all that I can be. That's why I need to allow God to do work in me all the time. So I can be all that God created me to be. Not just partial. Because if I'm all that God created me to be, guess what? It doesn't matter what is thrown at me. I'm going to be able to deal with it and I'm going to be able to handle it because I'm going to have my mind is going to be in a much better spot. So in this judgmentalness, sometimes we start judging others that raised us. And maybe it might have been a grandmother, a grandfather or an aunt and uncle. Because that's where the primary influences happen in the home as we when we when we're born. OK. And so in that primary place of influence if that primary place of influence is dysfunctional if there's issues going on if there's alcohol in the house if there's drug addiction in the house if there's yelling in the house if there's arguing in the house if there's physical violence in the house if there's uh, sexual abuse in the house if there's whatever in the house that is contrary to the word of god that deems it dysfunctional because that's how we determine whether it is dysfunctional or not. If it does not line up with the word of God and how God ordained the family structure to be, then that family structure is dysfunctional. Make sense? Okay. So what we have to do is we have to analyze. We have to take a time, a season, okay, to look back to where we came from, to look back how we were raised. And now here again, we start looking at mom and dad and we can get very judgmental, especially this group. We can be very, uh, we can project responsibility onto somebody else. Well, look at, you know, and I did, you know, I did a lot, many years. I blamed my dad for a lot of disconnect that I had in life with, with different relationships with male authority figures, you know. Um, and, uh, and that was just, a, that was just a, an excuse on my part that I was excusing my choices, my bad choices, and projecting that responsibility onto my father. And primarily, you know, and, and, and I'm not saying this disrespectful to my dad in any way, shape, or form. He was very well liked. Uh, we were from Vero Beach. My family has been down there since dirt was created, you know, and, 
And, um, you know, my mother drove on a, 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 she came from North Florida on a covered wagon in 1921 with her, her father, my grandfather and the family. And they, they were a poor farm family in North Florida and they drove a covered wagon, packed up the wagon and moved to Beverly, you know, uh, to Vero Beach. Okay. And, and my father's family was involved with the citrus industry and, and um, Grandpa uh, Carlsworth, he uh, started a grove in, in Vero and they, they later on in life, they, they met and, uh, and we were a great, we had great, um, matter of fact, they were pioneers in our church that I was, a, uh, went to when I was a little boy. And um, so there was, there was love in our house. There was, there was no abuse in our house. There was no alcoholism in our house. There was no drug addiction in our house. But you know what? Our household was dysfunctional. It did not operate as God in, instructed or intended it to, in, uh, to operate. And, you know, and there was uh, my mom. She was, she was, she was, she, uh, she was the authoritarian. There was, there's no doubt about it, you know. Daddy would try to, you know, get us get us out of the trouble and so forth like that. But mama would come home, boy, you better watch out. You know, she was firm. She was loving. She was she loved the Lord with all her heart, mind and soul. But there was dysfunction there. So and when you don't know it, when you don't realize it, you don't realize that something is wrong. Correct. Just like when you come in here. If you don't, if you come into Fresh Start Ministries and you don't see that you have a problem, if you don't see that you have a drug problem or an alcohol problem or a life controlling problem in any shape or form, guess what's not going to happen? You're not going to get any help. Because if you don't see that you have a problem, you're not going to seek help for it. And you're just going to be here playing games just to get the judge to, to stamp you. OK, you're OK. You don't need to go to prison. You're good. You did what I asked you to do. You did a year program. No, basically what you did was just live in a, in a, in a drug and alcohol rehab program for a year. You didn't work it like, it like you were supposed to. And that's why we're so strict on you guys as far as doing that, because we don't let that happen here by the grace and mercy of God. If we see somebody not working the program, you know what we're going to do? We're going to bring you into the office and we're going to talk to you. We're going to deal with it. And we're going to try to understand what, what's going on with you. And then if there's no change, guess what? Then you can go out there on Edgewater Drive and play games out there. We don't want you to play games in here. Okay? We want guys that are serious about working on your life. Because when we all are come under that umbrella, when we all come under that, then guess what? There's nothing that we can't accomplish. Nothing that we can't accomplish together through the grace and mercy of God. Because in Philippians 4.13, he says that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Man, I tell you what, I get excited even when I hear that. I'm excited right now. I'm, 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 no, I'm What did I tell you, Jeremy? I mean, I'm no longer tired anymore. I'm just, I'm enthusiastically energized. Amen? And you know what I see? Because I'm seeing smiles in your faces. I'm not seeing what I saw at 6 o'clock circle up tonight. Because you guys are excited too. Because you're catching the vision also. And that's good. So you need to take notes. You need to really uh, dig in and listen to what we're saying here. And so we're talking about judgments. Because the judgments that we fall into when we are younger, okay, we bring with us in our adulthood if we're not, if we don't deal with them. Because if we don't deal with the stuff, guess what? It's, it's not going away on its own. And why is that so important? I'm glad you asked that question. It's very important, especially with judgments, because judgments, you know, um, we tend to fall into that trap so much. And how many here, come on, let's, let's see how many people here are honest tonight. How many people here have judged somebody incorrectly in the program already since you've been here? Okay, good. We got some honest folks in the house. All right. Now, have you experienced being judged yourself yet as a result of that? Mm-hmm. Okay. You see my point? So if we're judging our parents 
if we're judging the person that raised us, if we're judging people from our past, then guess what? With the same measure we're judging them, we're going to be judged back for it. That's why you see somebody that has been physically abused ends up being a physical abuser. If you, if you know somebody that has been sexually abused, typically speaking, and not all the time, but typically speaking, that person can tend to grow up to be in a sexual abuser. Okay? And that's why it's very important that we, we cut that curse. We, we sever that, that stronghold in their life. Okay? And we can't do it, but we can teach you how to allow the Spirit of God to do it because that's where the transforming power is, in the, the Spirit of God Almighty. Amen? So if we're, if we're judging, and, and think about this for a second. If we're, if you're, I'm sure you've been thinking about the person that raised you or the people that raised you, okay, as I've been talking. All right? And maybe there's some issues. You may be here, and, and I just want to say this. I want to be sensitive now. Because um, you may be here and you, you were in uh, horrific conditions when you were growing up. And first of all, I am so sorry that you had to experience anything like that. But I'm going to tell you something. If you can get to the point that you can let that go, that you can ask God to heal you of that abuse, that happened in your life, it's going to positively affect you in the now more so that you can probably ever imagine. And, 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 and again, I'm, I'm reaching out to the folks on um, Zoom and, and Facebook that the same thing applies to you. If you have been... Um, uh, abused or in a relationship or, or raised in a, in a dysfunctional environment that uh, has scarred you and has, and has damaged uh, you and you've got some hurts in your deep down in your soul that you need to deal with. And, and, and some people may even think about, well, this is just foolishness, you know? But I'm telling you something. We have seen it time and time again. This ministry has been in existence for 38 years this June. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's give Pastor Joe and Kelly and the Lord a, 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 a praise clap. And I'm telling you, we have seen it time and time again, the two different persons that are here. There's two different individuals that will be here. There's the individual that will is here and just kind of maybe pencil whipping his program, you know, just taking his homework and just, okay, let me just write something down here and, and be done with, turn it in and, until the counselor reads it and then you're in his office, you know, dealing with that, okay? But then there's the person that comes through that front door that is serious about working on their life or wants change, you know, but doesn't really know how to obtain it. And see, nobody walks through that front door and crosses that threshold and has everything they need to know about recovery. That's why it's, you've got to trust the process and you've got to trust the people that God puts into your life here at the ministry in the, in the realm of the staff, uh, the interns and so forth like that, um, that can help you walk through that process. But here's what we do because of judgments, because of judgments that we have judged others with in the past, that we have carried that stronghold with us in our adulthood, Okay. We're too busy judging the people that God has put into our life versus listening and trusting God that God put these folks into your life to help you and to lead you and guide you and direct you into a uh, life that is going to be much better than the life that most of you came from when you before you got here. So that's why it's so important for us to deal with this, this, this stronghold of judgments that we have in our life so we can be free to learn what we need to learn as a whole here at the ministry. Does that make sense? Okay, and, and, and there's other areas that we can learn from too. When you go to church, when you go through the praise and the worship and you listen to the sermon, 
It doesn't matter if it's a sermon that is so boring, it puts you to sleep. There's words there, there's things there, there's scripture there, because the scripture says that his scripture does not return void. There's always something that you can you can get. <coughs> Excuse me. Or it may be the most charismatic pastor that you can imagine. Somebody that you really love to hear. And you really, it really what you you got to be careful with that too, because what you may be listening to is more of his charismaticness than you are his message. You, you get my point? You're listening to the production more than you are listening to the lesson that you need to learn through the message. That's why we want you taking notes. That's why we want you being engaged. That's why we want you being interactive. That's why, uh, you know, especially in our classes, okay? Because if you are, you'll learn more and you'll get excited about it. And before I came up here tonight, I'll tell you what, I was very tired. I was, I was, man, I couldn't even hardly... I was dragging, and I, and I asked the Lord, I asked the Spirit of God, I said, Lord, you got to meet me here, right behind this podium, and you have to energize me and give me what I need to share with these men so they can learn what they need to learn. And I asked for his anointing, his covering over my life. And you know what? As soon as I got behind here, as soon as I come out here, that's exactly what happened. I did my, I did my preparation, trust me, okay? I got my notes, but I also trusted and relied on the Spirit of God to work in me and through me and, and ask the Lord to supernaturally strengthen you guys because I knew that you guys were tired from working out there in that sun all day long. Amen? So, when we see that the healing that needs to take place in our lives, when we recognize that healing, when we recognize the fact that we have need of that healing, and I'm just going to throw a sidebar in here, okay? Just, just a little, little uh, lovingly correction. You guys need to go to the restroom before you get to class. Too many people getting up and leaving and coming back in is distractive for people here, including myself at times. Welcome to Fresh Start Ministries, family, okay? All right? So let's deal with that, okay? So by recognizing that we have a, a need to be healed in these areas, and see, here's the thing. Most everybody here is thinking about judgments right now. What kind of judgments have you fallen into? Have you fallen into that trap yourself? Have you maybe judged somebody... Um, incorrectly or maybe you've judged somebody that didn't deserve to be judged i tell you why my father he was quiet he wasn't he wasn't a very um you know boisterous person and and he kind of kept to himself and and you know he might have told me but i i just i can never ever remember him verbally telling me that he loved me i knew he loved me just by how he you know like i said he was my baseball coach he everything i, I knew he loved me but he didn't know how to communicate it. I didn't realize that as a young boy, okay? And later in life, I had an experience with a pastor in a church one time that I was about maybe uh, 10 years old, and my sister just had uh, twins. They were newborns, and I think they were at the church maybe for the first time. There's about maybe 300 people in this, three, maybe 400. I'm, I'm not sure how many people were in the, in the sanctuary. But we're all sitting, all our family sitting on the on one pew. And this pastor was a pretty strict pastor. I'm not going to mention his name, but you know, those of you that are here that are watching this, you may you may know who I'm talking about or remember. But it's been many many years. Obviously, it's been nearly 50 years ago. You know, but this is how much of an effect it had on me. My sister sent a note down the aisle or the road to me to go out to the car and get the the twins pacifier because she forgot them and they were they were crying so i did what i was asked to do i got up i was sitting on the end i got up and i was leaving and he stopped his message he was preaching stopped his message and scolded me in front of the whole body and he said son 
you don't get up during my class or during my sermon. You get yourself back to that, that pew and sit down. I was blown away. I was just like, here's a 12-year-old. I might have been even younger. Very insecure with myself. Oh, my God, I was crushed. I was just embarrassed to tears. How do you think that interaction with that pastor affected me later on in life? I didn't know it affected me, but it did. It did greatly. Who did I shy away from? Male authority figures. Because he was an authority figure. He was a pastor. He was a pastor of the church. And I, I shied away from male authority figures and especially pastor male authority figures. And, and I judged all of them through the screen of what happened to me being called down on the carpet like that. And it wasn't until I got to Fresh Start 33 years ago at the age of 32 that I was and started to, to learn about this stuff that I realized that that had affected me and how it affected me because I was being so judgmental toward others. See, it's not, it's, it's not God intended. God did not intend us to be everybody's judge. Okay. God didn't intend for us to be so, you know, we see somebody doing something they shouldn't be doing. And, you know, uh, we're going over there, you know, brother Tim, I'm going to speak to you in, in, in love. I see you're, you're, you're doing this and doing that. You shouldn't be doing that, brother, you know. Or maybe you did something that ticked me off, and I go over there, I'm going to hold you accountable, brother, you know. I'm being godly right now because I'm holding you accountable. But I'm not doing it in love. That's not godly. And that's all because of what, you know, I tend to, you know, possibly experience in my earlier years as a result of that, okay? Maybe I judged uh, you know, pastors incorrectly. Maybe I judged bosses incorrectly, you know? But see, this is all a part. The reason why I was doing that is because of what happened to me when I was younger. Didn't realize it. Didn't understand it. Didn't know it. I didn't even know I had an issue with it. But once I did, here's what happened. I got a revelation of the issue that was going on in my life that after I walked through the healing process and forgave that pastor and walked through the healing process and forgave my father, guess what I did? When I got married, and, and um, when I got married, my wife had two children from her first marriage. They're my, they're my kids. They're not my stepchildren. They're my kids, you know? And, and they were five or four and six. And you know what I did? Every day of their life, you know what I wanted to do? Son, daughter, I love you. Every day of their lives, they heard that from me. Because I didn't receive it. I wanted to make sure they received it. When my biological son was born, every day. And to this day, my, my daughter is 36, my son's 35, and my youngest is 27. And when we talk to each other on the telephone, you know what we say before we hang up? Hey, son, I love you, man. Take care. Hey, honey, I love you. Take care. They hear that from me, period. As, as a result of what did not take place in my life. And so I took something that that the enemy meant for destruction, God healed me in those areas and now turned it around for, for good for his honor and glory. See my point? Who are you thinking about right now? Somebody you're thinking about that you maybe have judged in, in, incorrectly. And let's, let's, let's play this take too. The person that you may have may or may not have judged, in this case, if you've judged somebody incorrectly, let's say uh, somebody that raised you, well, guess what? They learned from the person that raised them. And they learned from the person that raised them. And on and on and on. Nothing changes because if you if you want to be real, every one of you guys in here, if you knew your fathers, 
or the male authority figure in your life that, that raised you, you're probably very close, if not exactly like them. If you want to get real, get honest with it. A lot of times our pride won't let us. Because we say when we were younger, I'm never going to grow up to be like my dad. I'm never going to grow up to be like this person. And guess what we do? We grow up to be just like them. One of the things that I'll never forget, my oldest children, when my wife and I first got married, they asked me what they were wanting to call, what, what should they call me? And so you got to picture this, a four-year-old and a six-year-old. And I said, well, I said, I don't know. What, what do you want to call me? And, and they said, well, can we go talk about it? The two. They wanted to get there. So they went in this room and they, they went back in the bedroom, talked about it, and they come back out. You know what they asked me? They said, can we call you daddy? And I go, yes. And you know what that taught me? That, that showed me? That showed me that children want a father. We all starve for a healthy father and a healthy mother. Every one of us. And when we don't get that, when we miss out on that, guess what happens? We go looking for love less in all the wrong places. Do we not? All the wrong places. And that's what gets us in trouble. And that's what gets us involved with drugs and alcohol and illicit sex. And, and, and then we get, you know, somebody pregnant. And then we have children that we didn't plan for, that we didn't financially plan for. And, that, and, and then it just opens up a whole can of worms. And that's why we're so strict on you guys as far as, you know, no relationships while you're here if you didn't have it when you came here on day one. And some of you... We know some of you have are in rebellion. You just haven't got caught yet. But here's something you shouldn't have to get caught because you should hear the experience of people around you that God puts in your life to help you not to fall in those traps. That's what the staff is here for at Fresh Start to help you. We are here to help you navigate your lives now and hopefully not go down the same road of mistakes that we made. And you can learn from our mistakes. You know that's the difference between a wise man and a smart man, right? Smart man learns from, from his mistakes. But a wise man learns from somebody else's mistakes. Think about that one. That didn't go over too good, but that's all right. Maybe it's quiet in here because you guys are thinking. Maybe you're thinking about what's been talked about here tonight. Maybe, maybe there's some forgiveness that you need to extend somebody. It's awful quiet in here. Here's something I want to I want to share with you. In uh, 1 Corinthians 10 in uh, verse 13. And I'm also reading from the NIV. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Amen. Well, that's a promise I want to take and I want to hang on to and I don't want to let go. We all get tempted, whether it's judging somebody incorrectly, whether it's uh, thoughts about using or drinking or whatever, thoughts about leaving or whatever like that. Man, we just need to recognize what those thoughts are. Those thoughts are from the enemy who wants to destroy you. The enemy is wanting to kill, steal, and destroy you. Okay? We know that, right? What do we do when somebody, we knew that, that was going on out in the street? Seriously, think about this. When we knew that somebody was looking for us, what did this crowd normally do? We didn't wait for them to come. We'd go find them. All right? And then what did we do? We handled it. We, did, we got, got business taken care of, did we not? Well, guess what? We can do the same thing. We can do the same thing, but do it spiritually because our weapons are not carnal in nature. 
Our weapons are spiritual for pulling down strongholds. And so what we have, we have access. Now think about this. Seriously, just think about this. We have access as a Christian. Now you may not be here. You may be here tonight and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior. A little bit later on, I'm going to give you the opportunity to do that. But I want you to hear what I got to say right now. Okay? We have access to the creator of heaven and earth. We don't have to call ahead. We don't have to make an appointment. We don't have to call an assistant or an admin. We don't have to call a chief of staff. I mean, if you if you went to see the president, first of all, you had to know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody. Or be somebody, as far as the world standards, what, what they want. If you had a pocket full of money and you was ready to donate some money, you could probably see anybody you wanted to. I guarantee if you call up there and say, hey, I got $10 million I want to donate to somebody's campaign fund, and but I want to, I want to see the prez. Guess what? I guarantee you they will make a way for you to see the president. It may be five, five minutes, but you'll see him. Now, where's that check at, Bubba? You know, guarantee it. We have, on the other hand, immediate access to the creator of heaven and earth. And in that relationship, he can heal us of that past hurt. He can heal us. He can help us come to a place in our heart to forgive anybody that we need to forgive. And, and, and let me tell you something. And again, I want to be sensitive here, okay? And I, and I did. I talked to somebody one time that was a, a female that had been gang raped by, by a group of men. And, and she was, I had to share with her that, yes, it was horrible. It was horrific. I wish that had never happened. And, yes, the people need to be caught, prosecuted, and put in prison. Forgiveness doesn't get doesn't excuse consequences. But she still needed to forgive those men. And to ask her to forgive those men. Can you imagine that? And you know what she did? She forgave those men. And she's not allowing that sin of those men to control her life any further. Because of that. Same thing can happen to you guys. And as we, uh, I'm just going to simply, and, and we'll just keep, we'll just keep the video rolling right now because there may be somebody at home right now that has experienced something that we just talked about. Or maybe you have a judgment on somebody that raised you that you need to let go of. And I'm just going to ask everybody in this room and everybody at home to bow your head and first of all, I want to give everybody an opportunity right now. If you have never truly accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I want to give you that chance first. Because see, what we've talked about here tonight, you can't come to the place of a transforming, be tra being transformed as God intended you to be transformed without the Spirit of God living within you. This is no hokey pokey. And we don't normally do this in a recovery class. This is basically a recovery class. It's not a Bible study. It's not a, it's not a sermon. It's a recovery class. But I can't ignore the, what I'm feeling impressed upon to do. And if you're here and you want to accept Jesus Christ, I'm not going to ask you to come forward. We'll, we'll talk with you privately in the, in the office afterwards. But if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I want you to raise your hand so I can see and acknowledge what you're asking the Lord to do. Just raise your hand right now. Just be, be brave right now. Be brave. Be loud, high and loud and proud. Amen? Praise the Lord. Amen. Don't let the enemy keep you from making a decision. And I don't want to talk you into doing something. I don't want to get you emotionally... Um, to the point that you're doing that out of that aspect. I want you to do it because the Spirit of God is dealing with your heart right now. And as the Lord is doing that, 
just raise your hand and acknowledge him and ask him into your heart and into your life to be the Lord and Savior of your life. Now, I want to ask you this. I want to ask you if, you if you have had somebody that you have made a judgment against that you need to forgive and, and you need to uh, forgive and let go and, and allow a healing process to take place in that relationship. And maybe it's not going to be a relationship that you're going to be reconciled with. But it's just a person that you need to forgive for whatever reason and let that go and move forward with your life. If, if that describes you, raise your hand, please. Just raise your hand and let me pray for you. Praise the Lord. Hands going up all over the place. Amen. Hallelujah. So what we're going to pray right now, we're going to pray a prayer similar to a prayer that was prayed for me 33 years ago by a pastor in Vero where he laid hands on me and, and several men came up and, and laid hands on me as well. And the Spirit of, and the Spirit of God destroyed the stronghold of addictions on my life. And right now, I'm going to believe, we're going to believe together that God Almighty is going to destroy the spirit of, of judgmentalness on your life right now. Amen? Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you tonight and we just thank and we praise you, first of all, for these salvations, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And Father, we just uh, lift up these men to you, Lord God, that have um, acknowledged that they have areas of their life, uh, that they have judged people incorrectly and it's a stronghold on their life. Right now, Lord God, we ask you to move by your spirit in their lives, Lord God, and that you would touch them supernaturally, Lord God, and destroy that stronghold of judgmentalness, Lord God, in their lives in Jesus' name. And Father, we just thank you for what you're going to do in their lives. We thank you for what you're going to do as a result of this, Lord God. And Father, I pray that you would give them the strength and the courage and to, to go to their counselors now uh, and process what they have gone through here tonight, what they've learned here tonight, and what they have let go of so they can continue that process and just really fully understand what has happened here tonight, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And Father, we uh, just lift up everyone here in this room. We lift up everyone at home to you, Lord God. We ask you to, to help us to take this, these, this, this teaching with us tonight. And, and Lord, as we go through the coming days, uh, we, that you would help us process what we've heard here tonight, Lord God. And, and, and then apply what we have learned here tonight to our lives, Lord God, so we can be all that you created us to be. And we'll be sure to give you all the glory and the praise and the honor in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Now, we want to thank everybody. No, no, we're not done yet. We want to thank everybody for being here on, on Zoom and Facebook. Um, we, if you ever have any questions about our teaching or if you have uh, some, maybe some Maybe you got in touch with some feelings tonight, or maybe you got in touch with some memories tonight that you need to deal with. We don't do any outside counseling, but we can certainly refer you to some folks that do. And we just ask you, you can call the office at 407-293-3822, uh, and we'll be more than happy to direct you accordingly. Uh, we thank you and we praise you for being here. We ask you to continue to pray for us and to pray for the men that are in the program and their families. And we just uh, want to really appreciate you guys being here. God bless you guys. We'll see y'all. Hopefully we'll see you on Tuesday for the family group. Tuesday at 630. Same Zoom link goes out Tuesday mornings. So we'll see you then. God bless. Have a great evening. Amen. Give him a hand.